Protestantism failed all the criteria given in the Bible for a person to be considered a Christian. Not only I will list these criteria but explain their purpose in relation to Christianity. In the Bible a Christian must work towards righteousness and reach the point of being, blessed, for in all Semitic languages the word for righteousness is, Sadiq, King David explains who the blessed ones are in Psalm 65 4 Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. This means those whom God has chosen to bring into his house which are both on earth and in the heavenly temple. In order to enter the heavenly kingdom of God one must achieve the four stages of Christianity. 1. Faith 2. Baptism 3. Repentance 4. Kirban, Eucharist. In order to achieve the first stage which is faith one must achieve righteousness, Sadiq. In order to achieve the stage of Sadiq or to be blessed a person must be do the law. And to do the law requires the following. Of be humble and not arrogant or ignorant. We can see the importance to being humble in 2 Chronicle 12 7, when the Lord saw their change of heart, he gave this message to Shemaiah, since the people have humbled themselves, I will not completely destroy them and will soon give them some relief. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem, we are told in the New Testament in James 1 9 how important it is to be humble. In James 1 9 believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. Point one zero, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. Of course the opposite of being humble is arrogance which leads us to protest. B. Become obedient and not a protester. In Romans 13 5 we are reminded to submit in order to avoid the punishment. Romans 13 5 therefore one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath but also for the sake of conscience. See, a doer of the law and a just a hearer of the law. Romans 2.13 For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but it is the doers of the law who will be declared righteous. D. Must not change the words in the Holy Bible or omit any of Christianity. Protestants are often seen quoting from Revelation 22 18-19 which says, 18 For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book, 19 And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. However, if you open their Bible, note how Canaan is omitted in their Old Testament and yet in the New Testament in Luke he is mentioned. Take a look, King James Version Genesis 11:13. After he begot Salah, Arphaxad lived 403 years, and begot sons and daughters. King James Version Luke 3:36, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of Noe, which was the son of Lamech. It is undeniable that Protestants tempered with the Bible because the Apostles 2000 years ago had the correct version of Genesis as seen in Luke. Protestants rejected the book of Enoch and his prophecies only to turn around and accept them when Enoch's prophecy is quoted by Jude 1:14-15. That's silly, take a look. Enoch 1, 9. Behold, he comes with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon them, and destroy the wicked, and reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and ungodly have done, and committed against him. Jude 1 14 and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, fifteen to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He must obey the office of priesthood and no other authority. Jesus is the highest priest who established the office of priesthood which the Protestants tried to reform. F. Must believe in preserving the dogmas and doctrines of the church not seek to reform them. In order to be blessed you must the following. Matthew 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let's look at who is considered blessed in the Bible. Matthew 21 9 The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Mark 11 9 The ones who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Luke 1 28 And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Luke 14 15 When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. John 12 13 They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. James 1 9 But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. James 5 11 As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Roman 4, 8 Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Revelation 1 3 Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Revelation 16 15 Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed, so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Revelation 19, Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. Revelation 22 7, Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words. 1 Faith, Faith can only be given by an orthodox priest or else the faith is counterfeit. We know that faith and the law are husband and wife one cannot separate them. To those who feel that they can dodge sin without the law and only apply faith, the Bible says in Roman 3.31 do we then nullify the law through faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we establish the law. To those who feel they can get away from sin by getting rid of faith and only apply the law. The Bible tells us that faith is nothing without the first commandment in Mark 12.30 and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength this is the first commandment. So we can see that the person who wanted to get rid of the law can't have faith without the law. The person who wanted to get rid of faith and just did the law can't do the law without faith. Therefore, we must reach this conclusion, doing the law and having faith go together and cannot be separated. James 1 9 But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. The law is Ten Commandments. When the Bible speaks of doing the law, it means doing the Ten Commandments. The First Commandment says you shall have no other gods before me. Let's read about thus First Commandment straight from the Bible. In Matthew 22 37 you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. In Matthew 4 10, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. In Mark 12 30, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. In Luke 4 8, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. 2. You shall not make idols. Commandment 2. Matt 4 10, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Luke 4 8, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. John 4 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Rev 2 14, But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, to eat things sacrificed to idols, Rev 2 14, Rev 2 30, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow, my servants to, dot eat things sacrificed to idols, Rev 2 20. The third commandment says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Protestants use the Holy Spirit in vain by telling the world the Holy Spirit called them to preach, reform the church established by Jesus, and disrespect the doctrines of the church. Commandment 3 in the Bible, Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men, Matthew 12 31. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, Matthew 15 19-20. The fourth commandment says, Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Commandment 4 in the Bible, What man is there among you who has one sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath, Matthew 12 to 12 And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, Matthew 24 20. There would be no reason to pray this if the Sabbath was not going to be in existence. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath, Mark 2 27. This verse tells all who will see which day is the Lord's day. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, Mark 6 2. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read, Luke 4 16. 
Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths, Luke 4:31. The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy? Luke 6 5-9. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, so ought not this woman, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. Luke 13 14-16. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And they could not answer him regarding these things, Luke 14 3-6. Are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? John 7 23. The fifth commandment says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Commandment 5, For God commanded saying, Honor your father and your mother, and, he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death, Matt 15, 4. Honor your father and your mother, Matt 19 19. Honor your father and your mother, MK 7 10. Honor your father and your mother, MK 1019. You know the commandments. Honor your father and your mother, Luke 1820. The sixth commandment says, You shall not murder. Commandment 6, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, Matt 521-22. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, these are the things which defile a man, Matt 15 19-20. You shall not murder, Matt 19 18. Murders, all these evil things come from within and defile a man, MK 7 21, 23. Do not murder, MK 10 19. You know the commandments, do not murder, Luke 18 20. 7. You shall not commit adultery. Commandment 7, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart, Matt 5 27-28. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery, Matt 5 32. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications. These are the things which defile a man, Matt 15 19-20. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery, Matt 19, 9. You shall not commit adultery, Matt 19 18. Adulteries, fornications. All these evil things come from within and defile a man, MK 7 21, 23. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery, MK 10 11-12. Do not commit adultery, MK 10 19. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery, Luke 16 18. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, Luke 18 20. Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery, and Jesus said to her, Sin no more, John 8, 4, 11. Indeed I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, Rev 2 22. 8. You shall not steal. Commandment 8, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, thefts, these are the things which defile a man, Matt 15 19 to 20. You shall not steal, Matthew 19 18. It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves, Matthew 21 13. Thefts, all these evil things come from within and defile a man, Mark 7 22 23. Do not steal, MK 10 19. You know the commandments. Do not steal, Luke 18 20. 9. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Commandment 9, Again you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, Matt 5 33-34. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, false witness, these are the things which defile a man, Matthew 15 19-20. You shall not bear false witness, Matthew 19 18. Do not bear false witness, Mark 10 19. You know the commandments, do not bear false witness, Luke 18 20. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, Revelation 2 2. 10. You shall not covet. Commandment 10. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, Matthew 6 25. 
For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, these are the things which defile a man, Matthew 15 19 to 20. Covetousness, all these evil things come from within and defile a man, Mark 7 22 to 23, I have kept my father's commandments, John 15 10. So it is clear that Jesus taught every one of the Ten Commandments and that he also kept them. Revelation 1 3 Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Revelation 22 7 Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words. We must remember that faith is given by a priest. Jesus himself being the ultimate priest chose his apostle and taught them faith in order to make others Christians. The Apostle Paul himself converted to Christianity via the teachings of the priest Ananias. Paul in his teachings says it is the preacher who brings faith to the unbelievers in Roman 10 14 How, then, can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? 15 And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. It is important to remember that when Paul says, how can anyone preach unless they are sent, he is not talking about people who claim to have been sent by the Holy Spirit. He is talking about being sent by the will of Christ himself. Priesthood starts at Jesus and is distributed from the apostles to the very low priests of the church. So priesthood is apostolic in the New Testament. Paul goes on to say that as Isaiah preached in Old Testament and generated faith, the same is true in the New Testament Romans 10 16 but not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? 17 Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. The priest's duty is to teach the faith of the church to the public. The faith of the church include the following. 1. The mystery of the Holy Trinity 2. The mystery of the Incarnation. 3. The mystery of baptism. 4. The mystery of the Holy Communion. 5. The mystery of resurrection. 6. Human salvation. 7. The seven sacraments. 8. Baptism. 9. Confirmation. 10. Penance. 11. Holy Communion. 12. The unction of the sick. 13. Holy matrimony. 14. Holy orders. Lastly we must remember what Paul said in Roman 1.17. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. So based in the first criteria of Christianity, Protestants are failures because they don't have a priest to teach them faith, they don't do the law therefore they are not righteous before God, and because they are not righteous the Bible say they are not blessed, only those God has chosen as his family are blessed which excludes the Protestants. Protestants nullify the law through faith when the Bible says in Romans 3:31, do we then nullify the law through faith? Absolutely not, on the contrary, we uphold the law. Protestants say that a person does not become righteous by doing the laws given to Prophet Moses. The Bible disagrees with Protestants when the Apostle Paul says in Romans 2.13 For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but it is the doers of the law who will be declared righteous. Protestants say the laws of God given to Prophet Moses in the Old Testament are abolished. The Bible disagrees with Protestants when Jesus says in Matthew, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. Protestants say the laws of the Old Testament are to be ignored. The Bible disagrees with Protestants when we read Hebrew 10:28. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. Protestants say the laws given to Moses were cursed and therefore not holy. The Bible disagrees with Protestants when the Apostle Paul says in Romans 7 12 therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Protestants say that not a single person on God's green earth did the law and became righteous. The Bible disagrees with Protestants when we read Luke 1 5 there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. 6 And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Protestants say they are in the love of Christ. The Bible disagrees with Protestants because Jesus himself said the following in John 15 10 If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. The Ark of the Covenant is the word of God on stones while Jesus is the word of God in flesh. Therefore the commandment is God and Jesus is the Son of God which makes Jesus God John 1, 1. Underscore, 2. Baptism, can only be performed by an Orthodox priest and or else the baptism is counterfeit. 
We know from Mark 16 16 that he who is baptized is saved. Mark 16 16 Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. The purpose of faith and baptism in Christ's death is to free us from the everlasting curse given in Deuteronomy 28, 44 to 46 and make a person a new body and a new soul, a Christian. Underscore, 3. Repentance. Repentance can only be performed by an orthodox priest or else the repentance is counterfeit. The purpose of repentance is to ask for forgiveness of daily sins. So Paul says, Blessed is the one whom God didn't count his sins. Roman 4, 8 Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Underscore, 4 Kirban, Eucharist, to receive the body of Christ. Luke 14 15 When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Revelation 19, 9 Revelation 19 Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. Underscore, the word, Protestant, comes from the verb to protest. He who performs such act as a Protestant or the protester. A Protestant is a person who publicly demonstrates strong objection to something, a demonstrator. Now, when we look at the synonymous words that help understand better the meaning of this word, we find the following words, demonstrator, marcher, objector, picketer, agitator, demagogue, exciter, fomenter, incendiary. Insider, instigator, kindler, provocateur, rabble-rouser, reformer, reformist, alarmist, extremist, insurgent, insurrectionist, radical, rebel, revolter, revolutionary, revolutionist, subversive, troublemaker. None of these word breath, obedience, but accurately describe the first Protestant, Martin Luther who was the opposed of the Roman Catholic Church, a church known to forbid its clergy from marriage and was excommunicated by the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy 4. 1 to 4 way before the church came to existence. We read in Hebrew 10 how opposers will be punished. Hebrew 10 27 but a certain fearful looking for of judgment, and fiery zeal, about to devour the opposers.